Hello everyone, welcome back to your astrological forecast. Uh, this one we're going for um, or from October 14th <laughs> through the 20th. And we have the full moon coming in at 24 degrees of Aries this week. And then we also have Venus moving into Sag. And just, you know, tons of aspects coming uh, from the moon as, as she moves through um, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. So uh, let me just bring over my table and go through it one day at a time as always. Hold on. Okay, so this is Monday's chart set for 5 a.m. Pacific time. As usual, I have to use a zero degrees Aries uh, house setup so that, um, well, because I don't know where you guys live. <laughs> There's no way I could make it accurate enough for even half of you if I were to throw it into... Um, well, I do have it set for Pacific time, so so there's that. But uh, just add add an hour, depending on where you are. Add three hours, maybe even four hours when it comes to Atlantic time. So, okay. With that said, I want to focus in first on the uh, Pluto sextile Neptune. It's actually N Neptune that is sextiling Pluto that's just kind of sitting there. But notice the sextile here and the trine here, which is an aspect of the architect, and Mars is in this grand water trine configuration. So Mars, Neptune, uh, hopefully this is a clean up, clean up time and too many people weren't affected by, uh, well, of course there, there were many, affected by Hurricane Milton, and they're still cleaning up from Helene. So this is all right here. You know, Venus can bring through intensity that's connected to crisis. Uh, or Venus and Scorpio, I should say. Scorpio can bring through intensity that is connected, uh, you know, to crisis. And then Venus would be the unification of kind of bringing people together and trying to create harmony after crisis. And with the trying down to Mars... Uh, and this is this will probably be just about all week. I uh, just the energy Mars putting in lots of energy and lots of work into their homes, which is you know that's a cancer <laughs> cancer phenomenon. It has to do with our home and our families. And then with the trying to Neptune, Neptune is this broader, oh, this broader consciousness. That uh, that can be, you know, unity consciousness. But when we're talking in Pisces, we're we're back into water. Neptune is water and gas. Pisces is water and gas, of course. So there's a double whammy here, and then bumping up against Pluto. You know, this this is one of my arguments for uh, harmonious, so-called harmonious. Uh, aspects, you know, the blue lines, that I can't always say are harmonious. I can just say for sure that it's fast moving energy with the trine, and then there's the opportunity with the sextile. So the opportunity here is, well, on one level for insurance companies to, to be in integrity and, you know, do their payoffs right away. I'm this is, well, Saturn rules the government. Saturn rules Capricorn. Uh, some of this, and especially this little semi-square back here, is the, the friction that's going on in, with the mood of people who are hopefully getting the truth. You know, Saturn can be a you know, reality check. And reality check is that FEMA is on it. All the lies that Trump has been putting out and all of his um, cronies, all of his corrupt cronies, have been putting out about FEMA and how, uh, you know, nothing's working and blah, blah, blah. Uh, they're all lies. So there's the reality check. Are you going to be, no, I know you guys wouldn't, but my question is for people is, are, are you going to be colluding with a grifter? and his cohorts, are you going to be victimized by any government official? And that's another part of this Neptune sextile Pluto. 
because Pluto in Capricorn, in the highest sense of or highest use, highest uh, way to utilize the energy, is to work as hard as you can to have your duty and responsibility to yourself that you block out lies and you call out corruption when you see it and hear it and try to you're still going to I mean of course we're all still compassionately wanting to help anybody that's in need at one of these times and this could be I could be speaking to any time. We could be speaking about immigrants here. We could be speaking about any any way that people can be victimized by a narcissistic, cold, abusive, you know, person who wants to be a dictator and who is already acting like a dictator, trying to control, control Capricorn, the masses, Pisces, and, and Neptune, okay? So we've got a double whammy of intensity going on here because Pluto's at that 29th, that nth degree. Of course, it won't shift into Aquarius until uh, November 19th. It won't be there to stay until November 19th through um, through <laughs> March of, of 2043. So so there's there's that, okay? And the best way we can, to get back to the best way we can use the energy here is to take self-responsibility for your belief system that creates your reality. So if you're believing, you know, if people are believing in somebody who's dark and corrupt, and you have to check yourself. You have to go, where, where's my blind spot? What is it within these corrupt people that makes me attracted to that? And what am I getting from it? So there are, again, reality checks here. With the moon connected to Pisces, things are serious. Um, we are grateful for those. I'm especially grateful to know that Lori, with the way of positive change, is has been fine. She got through it fine, and she's safe. And um, I, I believe her family is too. So Pluto, sextile, Neptune, again, Spiritual reality check is the main thing I want to say here. And uh, the opportunity to get on your spiritual path and not be victimized anymore. To use your compassion and your intuitive wisdom, your sensitivity to know that <laughs> if there's a government official running on hatred and lies, they cannot be trusted. And then that brings us down here to the other connection, the other, notice here we have two sextiles and the trine coming from Pluto to Uranus. Uranus brings through sometimes shocking events. In Taurus, it's going to have to do sometimes with money, sometimes with relationships, other times it'll be self-preservation and safety. So there again, fast moving energy. Thank goodness Biden's in the White House. Thank goodness that we have, uh, you know, FEMA that is uh, taking good care of people best best they can. They are not out of money. They are not. So these these lies that have been going out are just to create chaos and try to put people, you know, off. Well, don't let yourself be put off your power. Pluto is all about power. Okay, Uranus is about change. So hopefully people will see how they've been misled and they will be going through some change. Because, you know, self-preservation. Wouldn't you want to vote for the party and all the way down the ballot, up and down the ballot, completely blue, completely democratic? Wouldn't you want to vote for the, the, the party that's going to help you? And then we have, what's her name, Jill Stein, that's trying to siphon off. Well, she, she has been successful. She only comes out when it's a presidential election. She runs for the Green Party. I believe she's a Russian plant. And she manages usually to siphon off about somewhere between 40 and 50,000 votes um, that could, you know, could go to a party that's actually doing something for them. 
the the Green Party's not big enough to do anything for any much anyone at this point. Someday, maybe, someday the Green Party, the Echo Green Party, the whatever you want to call it, the independents, what I'm all for that. But we have to deal with what we have before us. Right? It's it's like, you know, your kid's hungry. You feed your kid, you don't say, you know what, if I give you all that now, then we're not going to have enough for next month. Meanwhile, your kid will be dead. It's that same mentality. Get yourself in grounded in present reality. We all need to be pr grounded in present reality and recognize our power because we are at a crisis point when it comes to... <laughs> You know, when it comes to climate change, the, the information was out there in 2007. Remember, remember Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth film? I remember having that poster up in my office. I mean, what in the world are people thinking if they're just now coming around and going, oh, shit? Like, wh where were you? Right? So if it's about time you freaking get on board and realize that climate change is not a hoax. We are, uh, and it is human created, you know, we are going through something that is mostly, uh, you know, human creation, man-made, and there you go. And, you know, later on, so in January of 2025, the nodal shift, so it, here it is at the end, because remember, the nodes always go backwards, so we're going back one degree, you know, eventually... The south node will make it to Virgo, 29 degrees of Virgo, 29 degrees, 59 minutes of Virgo. The north node will make it to 29 degrees, 59 minutes of Pisces. And you can see that by then it will be conjunct or very, very, very close because, well, Neptune, the retrogradation of Neptune, let's see, that, that stops. Um, it started July 2nd. It stops December 7th, and then it'll begin going forward. So these two will join exactly, and um, there you have it, right? The ocean, gas, things like that. Also, all levels of creativity in film and media, especially, okay? It's, it, it, that's very Neptunian. So we can expect lots of movies and more, and um, documentaries more than we've even had. Uh, because the more the closer it gets to that 29 degrees, things will really, you know, intensify. But with the nodal shift moving, just you know, think January after January 11th, 2025, the nodal shifts, the nodes will be in uh, Pisces and Virgo, and that's that's not easy. That's not easy at all. Uh, Pisces. On one level, it's great for spirituality. It's so good for art and music and anything in the mystical realms and anything you want to devote yourself to. And it's good for compassion. It's good for psychic abilities. It's good for um, empathic abilities. But it's not good for uh, trying to get through addictions. It's not good for uh, victimization where you're blaming you know, like, so here we have Trump blaming the Haitians, right, in Ohio, and saying they're eating dogs. Uh, what a, what a friggin' insult. That, it's just, it's insane. And the way he victim, victimizes, um, well, he's racist, right? He's, he's racist. There's, there's no, he's racist. He's a, he's an abuser. He's a, he's a rapist. All the things that he is, projecting onto, uh, you know, immigrants or, or anyone with darker skin, uh, any person of color, he basically, he's victimizing them. He's projecting who he is onto them. That's what he does constantly. So when he comes up with something new and he's blaming, you can be sure that it's something he's been doing on this, on, you know, undercover. And now we know, Right. So, so there's, there's all that. Uh, so the quick moving energy to get yourself empowered, it can help you create more and more abundance. But most of all, <laughs> put yourself in the place where you have faith in yourself and you can trust yourself. 
and and then with the sextile to uh, Neptune and Uranus again getting you on your spiritual path I uh, yeah okay also I don't know where to talk about it because there's no way to put it like in the chart but the um, the second moon which is actually, I guess it's a part of an asteroid or something that's in our in orbit with our moon. I got a, a hit last week. I posted it in the community section uh, that I just had this thing blip into my head when I don't remember what I was doing, but I wasn't focused on anything. It was, you know, how you have those little aha moments when you're just doing nothing. Uh, I got that the, the second moon has come into our orbit. It, it's been already there for... When did it come in? I can't even remember. Um, I think it's been a few weeks now. But anyhow, it's been orbiting with our moon. And I, I got that it will help during the election where women's reproductive rights and health care are so important. In that the second moon is here to help energize the female vote and for those who love women and family. So there's that. Now, I also could say, well, we're getting that from Mars in Cancer. The energy moving, the, uh, the desire for safety and protection, and uh, so that we can create. You can't, you can't see, that's the thing. I mean, it's like just, it's so simple. Just think in terms of how do you build a stable, solid foundation? So think of a home, right? <coughs> Excuse me. If you don't have safety and security. Bottom line. So there you go with Uranus sextiling Neptune. It's like challenging, even though it, it's an opportunity. It's not a it's on a square, but we, we do have the square over here, uh, from Mars to Chiron and Eris. But even just to focus in in here is that there's an opportunity to create stability with Uranus, Uranus being the change agent that can be that can work on a, in a very intuitive way to completely reform your life if you if you listen if you if you look for you know maybe you're reinventing yourself maybe you're trying to get your finances in order in a way that is in alignment with spiritual law you, you know you're not invested in corrupt companies that that support Trump. You're not invested in corrupt stocks that, that harm other people. Uh, you know, like, are, are you invested in, in alcohol, tobacco, and firearms? Or what was that, that company that was basically a smokescreen for ATF? I think it was like Altria or something like that. Uh, I don't know if they're still in business, but I just remember years ago... Uh, checking into that and, and I'm not in the stock market but anyway so when it comes to Uranus with the opportunity over to Neptune it, this is to get out of delusion to get out of a place where you are being victimized and turn it around put your power back within you know trusting yourself and those who are actually solid so so there's that okay now, you can probably see that the, we have this, um, you can see easily, we have the square. There's a T-square here between, and this is an approaching, well, no, actually, the, the sun will be approaching. Pretty soon it will be the sun, T-square, and Pluto. But now it's Mercury over here on this side, and um, Eris over here on this side. So here's the 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 power for the female vote and the surge you know it's like put Mars here because Mars rules Aries so it would be like putting Mars and Eris together so the energy the surge of power the fight for understanding that everybody and and we could say this even about uh, immigrants you know people who are trying to legally immigrate uh, or people who've been here legally and then 
there, you know, protection still needs to be there. Mars, Mars can protect, right? Mars wants to protect the family when it's in Cancer. Mars wants to protect anything that's new or anything that is trying to survive. Uh, so, so anyway, with the square up to Pluto, there's the challenge there. Decisions need to be made. And the news, be ruled by uh, Mercury, will bring through uh, intense ways to, well, it'll be, it could be transformative news that puts people who are abusing their power on their heads and women just, we've had it. We're not, we're just not doing this anymore, right? Uh, hopefully, well, maybe, maybe something will come out about Scrotus that shows how they have uh, misused money. I mean, more needs to come out about Kavanaugh. There were 4,500 phone calls of people that had news, that had information about about his um, his sexual assault during remember when when Doctor um, was a Christine Blasey Ford I think is her I think it's a Ford is her last name but anyway when she was giving she gave her testimony I uh, and, and you know and he's crying I like beer basically that's pretty much all he was about. And, and then he gets in, he gets in and he, and, and we know like he shifted that one person and then not only that, uh, what's her face got in Amy Coney Barrett, but I've, I'm for some reason lately just not as worried about her as I am the other, the five men. So, you know, and Trump pushed through three new people. So there's, there's that. Uh, so the news may bring through something about, because like who paid off his $192,000 gambling debt for him so that he could uh, be so-called clean enough to get into the, um, you know, onto the bench. And then um, also who paid off his house? Somebody paid off his house. Somebody, I mean, we could bet. Let's see, maybe, maybe it was Harlan Crow. Maybe it was Paul Singer, right? Maybe it was Leonard Leo or that guy like Bar, what's his name? It's probably Barry, but he spells it B-A-R-R-E. And then his last name, I don't know if it's Sayed or Syed. I don't know how to pronounce his name. It was some rich billionaire. So uh, that wanted Trump in, right? That wanted, to, yeah, wanted to uh, pack the bench for Trump. And look what they've done. So maybe some more news will come out about them. And, you know, that's a big mess we still have to deal with. I would hope that Kamala, with her background as a prosecutor against sexual abuse, would really get on top of that once she gets in the White House. So, okay. So there's, there's that. This tension field is, is going on. Uh, the other tension field down here are the, the two squares coming off of Mars to Chiron and Eris, and then over to the Sun. Now the Sun, uh, you know, you guys remember by now. You've heard me say it enough time. The Sun will all enough times. Uh, the Sun will always um, shine a spotlight on something, and we could bet because of the opposition to Chiron that it will have to do with um, anyone who needs support with feeling independent, with having true independence. Anyone who needs, uh, maybe something will come out in the news about uh, someone on the bench or justice situation type of a, you know, person in, in the government that's um, at a high level where there's been some type of um, maybe some abuse or something for somebody who was younger and not able to um, independently take care of themselves, you know, 
There's a, there's a real possibility there that something could come through with that. There's a spotlight on something. It's going to have to do with justice and fairness and equality. It's, it has the power of Eris over here to fight. And then with Chiron, it brings in the, you know, people who've been traumatized and wounding, or wounded, traumatized and wounded in their, um, in their trying to come forward and grow, in their very existence. Okay? So, what else? The, uh, I think it, did I cover? Yeah, I think I covered the, the Grand Water Trine here enough. Of course, this has to do with Hurricane Milton and, uh, and Venus bringing people together to try and help uh, transform the situation. Okay. And you can see this other aspect of the architect. So every time I say aspect of the architect, just think of how an architect plans something, uses the opportunity to build something, plan something, but the, the plans have to be mapped out before the, the whatever the project is can be built. And just because you have opportunities doesn't mean you get it without doing the work. So these are, you know, you, commitment is needed. Commitments needed. And then with the semi-sextile here coming off of the moon um, to Eris, again, there's friction. And then there's friction over here because of the abuse with Pluto over here to Saturn. Pluto and Saturn, the abuse, governmental positions, people in governmental positions that have no business being there because they're, they're only there for their own selfish interests and they don't care about uh, serving in their position at all. So, okay, the other aspect of the architect down here comes from Chiron to Jupiter and then up to the sun. And from Jupiter to the sun, this one's exact today. This is, um, this is definitely exact. We will have an exact conjunction of the, the moon and Saturn coming in at about 11 a.m., uh, but it's, it's cooking its way, and so the... Early morning will be serious, and it will get more and more serious as the day goes on, and then the moon will get very, very close to uh, to Neptune. Let's see, it moves about 13 degrees in 24 hours, so yeah, so tomorrow morning it'll be in here. So I think lots of compassionate, the mood, the mood will be much more compassionate, and hopefully get people out of, you know, get them away Get them woken up. <laughs> help, help them to wake up and get away from the hateful rhetoric that's being put out by the Trump administration, or that he's, I'm sorry, not administration, the Trump uh, campaign. Um, okay, so, oh yeah, and then what was, what was up with, oh my goodness, talk about the abuses of power. The, the news that not only did Trump secretly ship COVID-19 testing equipment to Putin, you know, at a time where we couldn't get it. They weren't the actual like test kits with the swabs, but they were, it was, they were machines because that's all by, put out by Abbott Laboratories. And that's all that we had at that time. But here we were, you know, worried and not able to, to have any support. And he goes and sends, and sends things to Putin. I mean, whoa, whoa. And then not only that, he sent a bag of burner phones to MBS. And guess who delivered them? I, I'm pretty sure it was Lindsey Graham. If he didn't deliver them himself, he was in on it. So, so there's that. So the Saudi crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, Mr. Bonesaw, the guy that chopped up a uh, Washington Post uh, reporter uh, is one of Trump's big friends. I think he should go live with him. And he can hand deliver some burner phones. <laughs> oh. Okay, so back to the the aspect of the architect here, Jupiter in Gemini will bring out more information. Gemini is all about information. 
Jupiter's retrograde, so it's it's going back. I don't mind Jupiter staying in in um, in Gemini because, well, on one level, I notice people have a lot more to say, and I like that. People might be getting overwhelmed with too much information, and and we can it's okay, you know. Those of us who know what if what has happened, we can just continue to remind each other, like yeah, don't forget he did that, right, and. And then with the sun, this, you know, this exact aspect here, um, yeah, 2138, 2117, yeah, it, it's all, it was exact on Sunday prior to this day here. So Sunday the 10th, or I'm sorry, Sunday the 13th, uh, what we have going on here is a spotlight of really fast, fast moving information that could kind of blow something up in the news. Again, Mercury going through Scorpio, it will be intense news coming out all the time for the, you know during this um, during this next month or so. I um, although Mercury doesn't retrograde we have a mm, yeah no we won't have a we won't have Mercury retrograde again until November twenty fifth and it'll be in Sag, so it, sometimes Mercury can move through one sign within a couple of weeks. It, it's usually uh, anywhere between about fourteen days and and thirty days. Sometimes a little bit more if we you know the retrogradation, but we won't have it there. So next two weeks to month, I I'll, I'll just we'll keep an eye on it. Of course, every week, but. We're now at the beginning stages of developing a foundation of transforming something. It can also be useful, Scorpio can be useful for refining things. So projects and things that you've already built, foundations that you've already built, the way you already think, transactions, like let's say you, you built to like an Etsy shop or a, or a website and, and you sell things. You know, Mercury would rule all of your transactions, right? Mercury also rules the vote. Mercury rules anything that has to do with um, communication, and, um, and and you know, it's it's the news, it's votes, but it's also the way we link patterns together. You know, like we're tracking patterns. And then we figure out the way things really work. Well, with Scorpio, it, things can just go so much more, um, you know, we can go more deep. We can really get into, like, research. So I would think that fact-checking would be um, working really, really well over this next, um, you know, because we're, we're only, we're less than a month away from the election, Right. By the time we get here, I'm doing this the Thursday before, but by the time we get here, we've only got another few weeks. So we can bet that Mercury will be, uh, Venus will be in Sag by then. We can bet that, I think on the, hold on, do I have, oh, i got to have that chart. Long, let me bust out my phone real quick and look here. I know I have it saved. Um, or maybe, hold on. Hold on, I'll pause it, and that way you guys don't have to wait for me. Okay, I have it. I hope there's not too much of a glare. Yeah, there is. I, I have a different screen on my iPad. So notice how Mercury's in Sag. It, it made it to Sag. This is the 2024 election, but I set it for 8 a.m., Washington, D.C., I've done so many readings on this already. Just look in my astrology playlist and you'll you'll find uh, all the election readings I've done. So yeah, so Mars will be in Leo. The, of course, the sun in Scorpio. That's always the case. Uh, Venus and the moon are together. Look at that. Venus and the moon oh, in Sag. Woo. That looks pretty good. Okay, so let me get back to uh, where was I here? Oh, yeah. The aspect of the architect coming off of Jupiter and the sun, I feel, is very, very beneficial for um, getting the, the news that we need, knowing, inf you know, having the information that we need. And, you know, every day towards the election counts. It, it really counts. 
Uh, we have this other inconjunct quincunx here. This is um, whenever you see this green line with that little sideways K. What that means is the need for an adjustment. It, it has to do with something is off, you know, and it could be our feelings, right? Because Venus and Scorpio, like deeply held feelings. Now, of course, the whole polarity of um, Taurus and Scorpio, and we do have Venus opposing Uranus as well, right? I mean, look at that. Uh, the deal with that is feminine or reproductive. Yeah, um, Scorpio rules the reproductive system and the genitals, okay? With the opposition to Uranus, Taurus is all about safety and security, and the principles that you hold your faith in. And people don't like being pushed. People don't like being rushed. It's all about self-preservation. And, and then Venus is over here and Scorpio digging her, her heels in, digging her heels in saying, no more of this crap. We've had it. And so I am going to predict that whether or, whether or not we ever know it I, until, you know, Rovember comes, I, which is right around the corner, but the, the, this is a pivotal time for uh, breakthroughs because we've got, we're confronted. When, when we have an opposition, we are confronted and we're getting news about it. We're getting news about things that are unjust and unfair. And then here we have the opposition here, and then the adjustment here. So confrontation that leads to a breakthrough, adjustments because we know something isn't right. You know, everybody can feel it. We're so, you know, everyone is just so tired of the hatred. Okay, so let's go to Tuesday. Now Tuesday, I just, I'm just going to focus on the aspects to the moon. And remember, like I said, very, very close to Neptune. The moon conjunct Neptune brings in the mood for more bliss. It brings in the mood for uh, being much more sensitive, transcending things that maybe you were stuck in, helping to dissolve confusions. Uh, it, it's good for getting in touch with your longings, your spiritual longings. It's really, really, really good for dream time guidance and meditation guidance and anything that you will devote yourself into if you're searching, you know, on your spiritual path, especially for the truth. And notice how we have a kite here and down at the bottom, the, the rudder, the tail that, you know, controls the kite is Mars and Cancer and well into that third decan where we are really blooming with sensitivity and care and nurturing and warmth and wanting to bring in more security. And again, still at that square with the, the sun, exact square to the sun and getting tighter, an even tighter orb to air. So there's really that fight for that major fight and courage for security and safety. That's really important there. But it's also, so decisions because of the challenge, challenging time that we're in. Mars opposing Pluto, every degree. So it's, it's within orb now. We've got a seven degree or six and a half uh, orb. But every degree closer, <laughs> it's going to get more and more intense, right? So this is all week long too. And... So we're talking Mars to Pluto. Mars will fight. Mars can bring through rage, especially especially like if somebody, let's just think probably someone else will come out on the news uh, talking about how they lost someone they loved because they, you know, got sepsis or something like that and or couldn't get the, or couldn't get the abortion that they needed and, uh, and, and now, now they realize that they're, well, the person's either already gone, has crossed over, or that uh, maybe they're infertile now. Maybe they can't ever have children again because uh, 
because they didn't get the care that they needed that would have had, you know, left them with a healthy uterus or healthy fallopian tubes or ovaries, right? Because again, Venus and Scorpio, reproductive. And it's getting intense because Venus is almost at that anoretic degree. Things are coming out. Mars is pushing, pushing the energy out. And uh, Mercury and Scorpio is bringing things out in the news. It's hitting up against uh, the people in power. Uh, and we are all watching, right? We're all watching. And the moon is the mood of the public. So after that serious uh, little, you know, time with Saturn, now it's hitting Neptune and, and we're all like, oh, come on, man, we need more compassion. We need more, you know, Pisces is all about thinking about the seeing the big picture. But on the dark side, Pisces can just be all over the place and in victimhood and won't take self-responsibility for creating their own lives, you know. So... If if we don't if we don't get if we don't get the White House back and we don't get uh, a lot of things to turn Roe v. Wade around that are needed, people are going to need to leave anyone with childbearing age or actually any woman because because the doctors won't be there. There won't be any doctors. Won't be any OBGYNs that will will want to practice in those states. There will be about twenty states that people will need to move from. That's, that's the big, that is seeing the big picture. If we don't get this turned around. And for everyone who's living in those, one of those 20 states now, their lives are in danger because they don't feel safe enough to leave and go to another state. Or maybe they can't. Maybe they don't have the money. And that's the other thing is how do we relocate these people so that they can be safe? It, I mean, it's just... So we really have to think for ourselves and do, our, do the best we can. Maybe we can start GoFundMes for some people. So, okay, so the kite for today is all about, again, people misusing their power and what can we do about it. But the sensitivities are there to see the problem and to really work it through and bring in some unity. But it's going to be intense. And I really do hope that this is not another hurricane. I mean, I really do hope this is not another terrible weather event because these are all water signs there's this is all water <sighs> okay so and then of course Uranus and Taurus is very connected to earth um you know I, I hope it's not an earthquake but we do you know we just really have to make sure we're prepared the best we can but, you know, when storms and things happen in the middle of the night, how do you prepare for that? I, I guess you you certainly don't sleep without your ringer on and the, you know, notifications. And you probably don't sleep very well anyway because all that noise. Uh, my heart goes out to these people. So, okay. Jupiter, we also have the Jupiter squaring the moon. And this would have started even earlier. Like if I go back a, few, a couple hours, you'll see that, that it was exact. So no matter what time you wake up in the morning, the moon squared Jupiter might have you thinking a little too much. The moon in Pisces can open up to everything and be very, very sensitive. And then uh, with the square to Jupiter, it, kind of, it can activate the mind. So... Yeah, there, there's that. I would say Monday night, do your best to get to sleep as early as you can. Now, but it could make for awesome dream time that gives you information that helps you make a decision. Squares bring in the opportunities for, for decisions. So, okay. And then we also have, notice how we, how we have that that same semi-sextile here from Saturn to Pluto, but now we have another one from Venus to it's a series. So just to reiterate, the one from Saturn to Pluto is um, with a semi-square. It, it, again, friction and then sometimes indecision. And for some people, especially when this you, know, you have these transits in your chart, uh, 
it could be to any planet. It can bring through on-the-job training, which is really, really nice to have. And then when I, and, and we can expect to see a lot of that actually for, for people that like want to get into the renewables uh, because of, of Biden's uh, infrastructure plan, all those new jobs that came through in September. What was it? Something like 245,000 jobs were added? Something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, okay, but then from Ceres, so Ceres is always about protecting whatever we're loyal to, you know, humanity, actually. She's holding space. She's a dwarf planet that's holding space for uh, protection to humanity and animals and all of the reproductive cycles that a woman goes through during her life. Um, she's also connected to grief and separation. So if some if you've lost someone, first of all, if you guys need prayers for anything, drop it in the comments. We love praying for each other. And but if you've had if you've lost someone or there's some separation from something that well, it could even be a, you know one of your fur babies. I uh, there there's with Venus and Scorpio here. There's the ability to grieve deeply, and then hopefully move on but with the semi square here there's there's some there's friction in that area there's there's frustration but again this could be on the job training for somebody too um yeah okay so i think that's it let's go ahead and go to um wednesday right here i'm trying to i'm looking at my notes over here too and my little ephemeris to see yeah, that moon conjunct Neptune, just as a note there, that would be exact at 10.09 a.m., somewhere in there, 10.10 10 a.m. Um, the moon moves into Aries at 1.35 or 4 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, and you'll see it, it's here, of course, but it's already gone over the uh, north node. So, and I set this one for 4 a.m., but you can see that, you know, the, the moon in Aries would, would have been right up in zero degree territory uh, in the afternoon on Tuesday. So that, I, sh I should have dealt with that in the other chart, but just know that hopefully you watch, you know, the days uh, together and then I get the timestamps in and you can always go back in and look. Um, to, to go over it again, but just know that Monday afternoon with the moon newly into Aries, we're all going to be feeling the push to move forward, to blaze our own trails, to assert our unique individuality and to move towards more and more independence. And to do that will help us get on our paths always. So Wednesday morning, waking up, I feel like it's, you know, a Tuesday night, definitely try and get your rest. But Wednesday morning, I feel like you guys wake up and, or we all wake up and go, okay, <laughs> we're up. It's time to go. Kind of like hit the ground running energy. You know how some mornings are like that? I uh, And then you can see that the moon is squaring Pluto. So there's, that's, that's a powerful, you know, this is cardinal movement oriented air energy. Aries is ruled by Mars, so that's movement oriented. But the cardinal energy between the moon and Pluto brings through moving forward so that you can have more empowerment in your life, more self-empowerment. And then, like I was saying, you know, we've got that opposition from Mars. That's going to be all week long. And... So it's all about safety, empowering yourself, asserting yourself so that you create safety and security in your home and that stable foundation that you can grow upon. We still have the T-square going on. Uh, the moon is opposing, well, even earlier in the morning, the south node. So dream time about uh, relationships from the past, possibly, early Wednesday morning. We do have, uh, so this, the trine we still have 
with Uranus to Pluto. The sextile from Venus to Pluto brings through opportunities to to actually, and look how close orb is just you know about one degree there. It was a little over one degree, but I. Um, this brings through that opportunity to refine and transform in ways that really deeply empower you. This, this is good for creating money. This is good for working with other people. And then with the trying down to Mars, as Mars moves forward, this, this is a good connection here. Uh, maybe, maybe I have a good connection with a family member, you know, Cancer Rules family. And maybe it's a woman in your family that that helps you, you know, uh, or maybe you help them. It can it can be both. You guys, maybe you help each other out. This is really good for women working together for anything, for any purpose. And then the sun, we have the in conjunct to Uranus, so that could bring through something. Well, there's an adjustment that's needed, but the sun shining a light on, on. Uh, something that's needed for balance, but also maybe to bring in more uh, justice. And then there's an adjustment that could be kind of surprising. I wonder about that. I'll have to wait and see what comes out on the news. And then you can also see this little sesquisquare square coming from Mars, I'm sorry, Mercury in Scorpio over to Jupiter. So there we go. Something to do with the news bringing out I would think something uh, financial news that brings through uh, a detour, maybe a disruption to plans, but it helps us to learn more in some way. Maybe, maybe how to avert crisis, I'm wondering. On the spiritual level, it could bring some people into a place where they have ideas that they want to research and I uh, and then maybe a disruption is averted because they you know because you know if you get if you listen to the guidance if you're if you're not distracted or you know avoiding guidance by being too busy not listening numbing out whatever it is watching tv instead of doing your meditations and listening and asking, what do you need to know? Uh, you know, you can get guidance that can have you know the power to avert issues because there's there's something there. There's some kind of a detour there. Now, Mercury, of course, has to do with short short trips. You know, not not long term travel, but well, it, it could it could, it could be partly long term too as well. You know what? Actually, now that I'm thinking it through, Mercury and Jupiter together, Mercury can be short-term, Jupiter long-term. This could be a travel disruption. So that's an interesting take. If you're traveling, especially by plane today, October, Wednesday, October, when is it, 18th? Nope, 16th. Uh, be sure that you allow extra travel time. Or it could be that, you know, you get there and then you're going to have to sit and wait. It could be a longer layover. Yeah. Okay. But there'll be plenty coming on in the news, that's for sure. I was trying to see, do we have... No, we don't have a yacht here. Almost. We, we have these those two, you know, in conjuncts that, that do bring through that need for adjustment. I'm thinking mostly move the moving forward, the the adjustment, making an adjustment because you listened to your guidance or you got the information you needed, and that created maybe the mood for moving forward needs an adjustment because you need to look more deeply at how to how actually to move forward. So the mood may make you do the the mood the mood of the moon <laughs> that wants to move forward can make you want to research things, right? Which is good because you have to research things before you start new projects. This is how it works. 
Okay, let's go to Thursday. Let's see. Okay, we have two for Thursday. So first of all, we have the Aries full moon coming in on 420, or coming in at Thursday the 17th at 427 a.m. Pacific. Here we have the sun at 24 degrees, and then we have the moon at 24 degrees, and it's sandwiched right in between Chiron and Eris. So that is a very powerful full moon. It's a very, very powerful full moon that wants to move forward. I wonder, hold on, let me grab Kamala's chart real quick. It's like I can't remember. Let's see. And I don't really look at transits. The, what's her? Yeah, oh, that's right, 27. I should have remembered that because the same as my ascendant. So Kamala's sun is at 27. And uh, and her moon's at 27. So this is this is right in range here. Now, the full moon tends to give us the you know like a burst of energy because we've got the opposition of um, the the light from the sun and shining completely on the full moon. This moon is ruled by Mars. So that brings through tons of energy and tons of light. In her case, fighting for justice and fighting for protecting, you know, the new. You know, she's all about, and look at, I mean, you gotta love astrology, man. When you look at this, she's fighting for, for uh, a $6,000, um, or she, she's running on a ticket saying that, that, People having new child, new babies would, would get $6,000 to, like, you know, buy cribs and car seats and whatever they need. And so she's supporting family, Mars Cancer family. <laughs> I mean, look at that. And... And, and then and she's over here thinking of other ways to balance out, you know, she, she's all about justice. She's... A prosec she's a former prosecutor. I uh, so even for us, just on a normal you know daily level, you, you think of when we have a full moon, it it's a release, it's a release of energy coming from the light of the sun, kind of pushes the energy through when we're like, whoa, okay. Mars has the, because Mars rules Aries, Mars has the tendency to help you figure out what you want. It helps to motivate you and believe in yourself and just go for it and trust your instincts. And with Chiron and Eris here helping out, it's all about courage and I'm trusting trusting whatever new thing you're trying to bring through right because chiron's been retrograde it's already crossed over you know this point before and it's it's been retrograde um it let's see when does it go oh no that was serious i'm looking at my notes up here oh did i not write it down oh yeah yeah Jul um, God, july 26 it went retrograde and it goes direct on December 29th. It went retrograde at 23 degrees. It's only made it back 2 degrees. It's going to go all the way back to 19 degrees. And, um, yeah, on the 29th, it'll make it to 19. It'll go direct. Okay. So... So Eris, so Chiron is not the the conjunction with Chiron and Eris. It's moving away, you know. Eris is just going to sit there for quite some time until twenty forty eight. It'll it'll be in Aries, and then it'll move into Taurus in twenty forty eight. That's a long, long time. You know, she takes five hundred fifty six to five hundred fifty eight years to get around the zodiac. So we all have Eris in Aries in our charts, wherever you have, you know. Aries, the, the later degree, she'll be sitting there, and she would have been working that house your whole life, right? So, yeah. I'm 70. 
I don't know how old you guys are, but I was born with Aries at 8 degrees of Aries, and it's just now getting close to my uh, ascendant, which is 27 degrees, and I'm 70. So that shows you how slow she moves. <laughs> so anyway, she's there for us to have the courage to move forward and trust our instincts and know that if we're here, we're in existence and we <laughs> damn well deserve to be here. And our task is to not, not abandon ourselves and um, don't worry about being first. Don't worry about being left out. Just focus on your own unique individuality and your own independence. In, you know, in Aries, that's what she's all about. So the moon is going to charge the full moon. The light of the full moon is going to charge the full moon and the sun together is going to charge up uh, Eris energy. So there's a lot of courage coming through here. So this is really, really good for the, the Harris campaign. Kamala and Tim, you know, because Tim's an Aries, so he's going to be super charged up. Uh, and with Chiron there, it's, it's fighting for the underdog. It's fighting for the little guy. It's fighting for everyone's existence. So there's that. And then to have the square to Mars charging all of that with cancer, fighting for the family, fighting for justice. It's all right here. Like I said, you got to love the astrology. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So that, in a nutshell, is what this full moon is about. Now, if you don't follow politics at all or you don't care, do the way that you would apply this in, or anyway, because we, we can apply this on many different levels. For us personally, if this is about figuring out what you really want, you've learned enough lessons, you've worked hard enough. Look how the, the full moon is exactly just, you know, within minutes conjunct of Eris. And as soon as as soon as it moves forward, you know, like within a half an hour or so, it will be right on Eris. Look at the 35 to 56 here. It'll be right there. And uh, and and so Take that, you know, use that energy, use that creative energy to, to say, hey, I'm not taking it anymore. I'm going forward in the way I want to go. And with, you know, with that 24 degrees, we're in that, that blooming energy. It's the, um, you know, the third decan that between 20 and 29 degrees where we are either deepening in our processes, which leads to the blooming, or we're already there and we're just blooming because of the connection with the full moon, I would say we're blooming. It, it's, you know, the flower is totally open and we're here. Or the, I don't know, whatever you, Mars, I'm thinking, you know, Mars ruling Aries, it's like, uh, or Mars ruling uh, Aries, the sign of Aries. I'm, I'm thinking um, you've got all the tools, you know, Mars rules tools. Now, Mars also rules the military, so there could be some light shining on unjust conditions for mili you know, people in the military, and maybe to have to do with the vote, there's that. Something may come out about that. Um, yeah. The sun training Uranus, uh, that gets getting tighter and tighter, or not training, I'm sorry, the in conjunct, the adjustment that needs to be made, that's getting tighter and tighter. That'll be... Two more days before that's exactly conjunct, or not conjunct, what am I saying? Exactly in that um, uh, aspect, that uh, quincunx, in conjunct, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> not conjunct, in conjunct. It's basically uh, 100, 150 degrees, yeah. So the light of the sun is in aspect to Uranus in such a way that we are not feeling very centered. And the full moon's not going to help. We're going to be so energized. But it has to do with fighting for justice, knowing that we have all the tools within us. Use, all of, use whatever tools you have. Um, yeah. Mars just activates, you know, 
the heck out of anything. And, and besides the connection between Uranus and, and transiting Mars, Mars being the ruler over here, man, it's just, it's tons of energy. It's just so much energy. So hold on to your hats. Be careful with your words. Watch your words. Um, Mercury and Scorpio can be a little troubling. Um, in the first decan of the sign, we are developing foundations. Well, we don't want to poke somebody, you know, while we're trying to make friends. Or be too overly like, ugh. I mean, I notice, like... <laughs> And I don't know when I put anybody down about it, but like everybody is feeling so intense. It's like we don't just get one or two exclamation points. I'm getting like eight <laughs> and going, whoa. <laughs> but, you know, it's easy to just keep tapping. So I understand it. <laughs> but it's like that, you know. So watch your words. If it's, you know, if, if it's um, something nice, we don't mind all the exclamation points. But if you're putting somebody down, um uh, you know, I mean, unless it's a corrupt politician, I don't mind those at all. But we have to be careful with our cussing too on YouTube. We, you know, there, there are new rules. You know, every time I upload a video, there, there's there's eight different checkpoints that I have to go through to make sure I comply in the video. There used to only be like three. Nowadays there are. I think I counted eight the last time. So uh, we have to watch our words. We have to think deeply. Mercury, think, communicate deeply in ways that don't betray our trust with others. We could be thinking more about the intensity of in intimacy. and our, Now, Mercury and Scorpio is really good for psychic abilities, too, for digging deep and, and um, you know, working on your psychic abilities. I... Uh, Scorpio is also good, like I was saying before, for transforming anything, uh, transitioning through anything, refining, recycling. Scorpio is great for recycling, you know, changes something from one form to another. If you're trying to make changes, it's really good. We still have, we have that, that Sesla Square going on to Jupiter, too, still. So, Yeah. So let me go to the other chart for um, for Thursday. We have Venus moving into Sag at 12.29 p.m. So this is Thursday as well. So now things shift. I should have talked about how intense this can be, but I, I think I the message, see, that's the other beauty with astrology is like you're looking for, well, when you're doing a natal chart, you're looking for a signature and there's, there's like this rule of three. Like if you see the same message coming through from three different ways, then you know you really have something solid that you can say. Uh, and all the intensity was coming through over here and over here and over here with Mercury. So I missed the Venus at that 29th degree, the most intense degree of Scorpio. So, uh, But again, what I'll, what I'll say now about it is just that it's, it's again, it's like the feminine, you know, the intensity of the feminine fight for justice and equality. So, but Venus, newly uh, moved into, newly entrancing uh, uh, Sagittarius energy. And notice how we have that opposition to Uranus. And so again, change over here. We're talking about the change that we initiated back over here when Venus was in Scorpio. Now we're really vocal about it. When things are in Sagittarius, we are speaking up. It's all about what we believe in. It's all about, it's ruled by um, Jupiter. It's all about um, what we put our faith in, how we trust ourselves. It's all about our wisdom. It has to do with spiritual law. It has to do with... Um, learning and figuring out what we want to, what we really do believe in. It has to do with creative visualization a lot of times, and that is especially true with the trine over to Neptune and the North Node. Creative visualization as to the path, you know, Sagittarius energy is very, um, well, It Jupiter helps open things up and expand, and then the Sagittarian energy moves forward. It's very directional. 
So it goes into the direction of abundance and what we aspire to and um, our, you know, our positive intentions. Now, it can be excessive, too. And it does rule politics. Sagittarius rules politics. So, I, but most of all, I see it as helping more and more, just helping people get on their path. Uh, in the highest sense, Jupiter is healing. Sag is healing, intuitive, and, and it has to do with finding the truth. If you're looking for the truth, you'll all, you won't you know go go wrong. Because even if you go completely, like let's say you got lost and went completely in the wrong direction, you'll figure that out after a while. One day you'll wake up. Some people have to hit rock bottom, and and then or some people just like they can't take it anymore. And and then they'll turn around and go, maybe I've been going in the wrong direction all this time, and. And they'll turn and go in a different direction. It's like uh, with in uh, Stairway to Heaven. There's two paths you can go down, but there's always time to change the road you're on. That's pretty much Sag in a, in a nutshell. But, but we're looking for direction. We're, we're searching. We're seeking. So, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's more of an expansive outlook in life. And... With the opposition to Uranus, it feels to me like, you know, this all this awareness. Uranus is about awareness to help us uh, find those principles that we, that we really value and that we can put our faith behind. So this is good. This is really good. Now, Venus also has the semi-square to Ceres. So it just may be the wanting to protect your family or protect your resources that gets you to go, mm, hold on, I'm thinking in a new way now. And, and so, you know, th there might be some indecision, but it's, it's okay. At least the, the awareness is there that, you know, if a person's not on their path, it feels awful. It feels awful. If you're on your path, you're working towards knowing yourself. You're, it's all about discovery, you know, self-discovery and individuation. And so, yeah, that's what it's all about. So if you're not working to get back home to who you truly are, it, you'll just always feel off. But we're all hard, hardwired to, to go back to who we truly are in our bodies. We don't have to wait till we cross over. <laughs> okay. Venus, also with the quincunx in conjunct down here to the moon. Notice how the moon is at the nth degree of, uh, so we've got the fire connection here to, to you know, well, this one's, this one is um, cardinal energy that moves forward in a really intense, like, you know, got to get there kind of way. But this one over here is mutable. And we've got mutable fire and cardinal fire. Mutable means that there, we're making an adjustment. And especially with that little semi-square there to series, definitely. Uh, the awareness comes in. We know we need to make a decision. And the moon in Aries is like, come on, you know, we can do it. We, let's just go. Let's try it. Let's just try something different, whatever it is. <laughs> and then the sun with the quincunx over to... Um, to Neptune, that's just coming into orb. So there's, again, th this is all really good for moving towards more justice, fairness, and equality. The sun is definitely in that third decan of, of you know, blooming. Um, and the adjustment to Neptune would be to follow the path of compassion. Uh, let's see, all the other aspects are still the same, I think. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, let's go to Friday. So Friday, I uh, 5 a.m. The moon's already made it to 10 degrees of Taurus. It's in a sextile to, yeah, and it's going to be even more exact as um, the next um, next hour, two hours. Yeah, two more hours, we'll have it exact. So by 7... 
if you sleep in a little bit or whatever, when you wake up in the morning, we're going to have an opportunity to go towards what we really value and build something solid. Again, Saturn in Pisces can be all about being on your path in a very solid way. It's like a, building a spiritual foundation, right? And with um, the opportunity of the moon coming in going, you know, I'm so glad I started because now I'm, I can really feel the difference coming in. Taurus is very in the body, very sensate, and it helps you to figure out where you are and you know how, what you really want. So there, there's the opportunity. And then there's also, Saturn is also, we all, well, it's Mercury that's in trine to moving into an, ex, uh, towards an exact trine um, over the next couple, three days or so. So all through the weekend for sure, uh, upcoming, we can see that Mercury and Scorpio is giving us some fast moving deeply probably trustworthy messages about creating that stable compassionate path so there's this is there's some psychic abilities going on here in the body trusting your body to give you those you know this this is empathic right here right empathic abilities come in when all your chakras are open, when you're not defending against life. and um, But it also helps you to set strong, healthy boundaries. Which brings me again back to Mars and Cancer and this T-square. You know, Mars is at that apex point of needing to um, create, have and hold really strong boundaries in order to move forward in life. And so to have the courage coming off of Eris, have the courage to, look how this is almost exact here, have the, the, the courage to protect yourselves. You know, just think of cancer, the crab, it's got a hard shell, and to protect, you know, the vulnerable meat inside. Um, so, you know, tender, the tenderness, the vulnerability. You think of children are vulnerable. Think of older people vulnerable, women vulnerable. The vulnerability needs protection. And, um, and then, you know, the anger that can come up when, when it, we don't have that. The rage that can come up and the discord with Eris. The, the goddess of discord that can kick up the, the rage and, and, you know, there's a, there's a problem there if the protection doesn't come in. So you can't open up your empathic abilities without having really strong, healthy boundaries. And the way you get that is by, here's a clue over here to the sun in, in um, Libra, the way you get that is to only engage in relationships that you know are trustworthy or you know how you can, well, if you trust yourself, you know how much you can trust other people. Like some ways you can't trust a certain person. Like, you know, if you, ha you might have a friend that you know gossips and, and so you just wouldn't, don't, don't tell them everything because if they gossip, you know, they're going to gossip with other people. That's the thing. Um, some people, you know, like aren't good at driving, so you wouldn't loan them your car. <laughs> some people will say that they'll do something, but they they won't, so you do, you don't bother asking them to do anything anymore. You you just don't rely on them that way. So if you trust yourself to understand the relationship, there's the healthy boundary to put in, into place. But with Eris, with this T-square coming off of Eris, I would say she's done and she's had it if, if the relationship isn't trustworthy enough. So there's that. Uh, let's see, we, do we still, let's see, is that a sextile? You know what? Do we have, 
Here, let's do it this way. Let me go to my um, tight orbs here. Yeah, I was wondering if we did have this sextile. Well, no, we just don't. Okay, let's go ahead and go to Saturday, and I'll keep the orbs tight. I was looking for the yod, but we don't have it. Okay, Saturday. Uh, yeah, with the moon, well, we've got a little semi-sextile. There's the beginning of an opportunity. The moon's uh, bumping up against Uranus. That's pretty good. Uh, this could be very psychic. It could be one of those mornings where you wake up with, whoa, <laughs> you know, wasn't expecting that. And, and you've got something you can run with. Uh, this is exact at, um, looking at my notes over here, 7.11 a.m. Somewhere in there it might be 7.12 because sometimes this little ephemeris the calendar thing is off. Um, yeah, so whatever intuitive hits you get will help you make an adjustment. So that's pretty good. Now this is exact right here, the sun to Uranus. So some new awareness that helps you make a change. This is very active, you know, activating here. And, and it could be a friend or a loved one, or any type of a relationship that helps you make this adjustment as well. There's that possibility. Um, let's see. Then the, the moon moves into, notice how she's at 25 degrees there, but I've got, I have notes over here. Let me go to, let's change the hours. And one, oh boy, hold on. I have to go quite a little ways. There we go. Nah. 29, 55 minutes. But actually, the moon moves into Gemini at about 1.07 p.m. So now the, the you know, it changes. It, we've got the, um, the moon trining Pluto. These could be powerful communications, uh, talking a lot, learning a lot about power and who has it and who's misusing it, abusing it, or who isn't. And then with the uh, sesquisquad right here, sesquisquare, the 135 degree aspect, this could bring in a detour. This could change somebody's decision to vote a certain way. And all based on the fact that, you know, information is coming out. We don't have the yod, but we do have two of the uh, quincunxes from the sun. The sun has moved it together or to far and I'm sorry, forward, <laughs> one degree, almost two. It's almost at 27, but we've got an exact uh, adjustment here coming from Neptune. So maybe Dreamtime brought some guidance that helps you make an adjustment when it comes to a relationship or anything. It could be even be a legal matter with, uh, with uh, Libra. You know, there's that possibility. Yeah, that, that's interesting there. And because of the inconjunct quincunx down to Uranus, again, that change, the light is shining for some reason, and there is the possibility of change. And now we can see that Mars is um, the only exact, uh, you know, square is, is just coming off of um, uh, Eris. Yeah. Okay, well, is there anything? Wait, more on Saturday, five thirty. Hold on, let's let's look at that. More five. That's six. Okay, opposing uh, the moon opposes Venus. Yeah, more women I think are getting on board with trusting their intuition and listening to each other as well. Th this is very empowering for women here. Okay, let's go to Sunday. Okay, there's a lot going on on Sunday, but um, when it comes to the moon, it's still, it's at nine degrees. We have an adjustment coming from something coming in the news or 
uh, your own psychic processes that brought through some information that helps you to ch make a change to transform something or dig your heels in and hold on tight. You know, because we're at that stage of, you know, we've been working on a foundation. And now we're learning some deep lessons because it's at 10 degrees. And the moon comes in to go, oh, well, here, I have just the information you need. Uh, something is kind of off. If you're feeling off, the information will come. If you just go back and trust your feelings, go, go into your, your feeling body, go ask yourself, what am I really feeling? Why am I feeling off? What is it? Is this person untrustworthy? Is that what's going on? And then, you know, just don't, um, uh, this is fixed energy over here with Scorpio. And then this is mutable energy over here. So if you just kind of hang loose for a while, you'll get whatever information you're needing, and then you'll know how to respond. So it's, it's a not a don't rush it morning. And it's Sunday, right? Uh, and then, let's see, uh, this, the uh, Sesco Square, well, the quincunx here, to Neptune, oh, the sun, the sun quincunx. I'm looking at my notes up here and going, what did I, what was I trying to tell myself there? <laughs> the sun, the light of the sun is giving information or shining a spotlight on something that needs to be adjusted in order to, uh, maybe, maybe something did come through in dream time. And, and now you know what to, what to do. There's that possibility. Dream time or meditation. But this is exact at 8.44 a.m. Let's see. What else? Yeah, Mars still the square there. Ooh, we have, we have two semi-squares coming off of the moon. One goes to Eris. The other one goes to Mars. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. There's a lot of friction. There's some action that needs to be taken, but there's indecision about it. And again, I guess I was talking about that already when I said, you know, just kind of hang back, get more information. You'll make the right decision at, at the right time. But just, you know, hold hold faith, hold firm to your, your faith in yourself. Uh, yeah. So let's see, anything else on Sunday night? I um, had that one, 8.44. The moon squares Saturn at, um, let's go. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it, it's an exact at 11 a.m., but I've got 10 a.m. here and it comes into orb. So yeah, early, that's, yeah. Or I should say later in the morning, we've got, between, oh, it's not just the two sesco squares coming off of the sun, but also the square. So now things are cooking when it comes to that need to make a decision and detours. Something, something comes out either for us personally or um, politically something comes out in the news. It's possible. But We've got detours, disruptions to plans here. If it does have to do with travel, uh, you know, just hang in there. But there could be, Saturn can bring in a delay. And the delay would have to do with some plans that where there's disruption. And that, then the square brings in the need to make a new decision based on new information that's coming in. And the moon is headed towards the conjunction to, to Jupiter. Let's see. Let me see how many hours it takes. I mean, it's to get even within. There's six degrees there, and it's 3 p.m. Uh, the moon vibing off of Jupiter in Gemini. Uh, so three, let's go to 6 p.m. Yeah, 17, 20, it's like four. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, the, as the day builds on in and into the evening, you know, like this would be 9 o'clock in um, Eastern time, what we have going on there is the moon's joining up with Jupiter. Jupiter's already sextiling Chiron. Chiron's moved back. 
uh, a degree. Uh, Jupiter is also within orb of the sextile to Eris. So might as well just put all this together because the moon's going to be over here pretty soon. And what this spells out, what this is building up towards, is feeling an emotional, feeling, well, it could be TMI, like just way too much information, I can't take anymore. And this could be a family member, or it could be the public mood where there's just too much going on, too much information, damn it, it's Sunday night, I want to rest. <laughs> uh and, but, you know, the, the opportunity is there to get the information if you want it. It just depends on what it is, what it's about. If you're cramming for an exam or a test on Monday morning, this energy is good for that. Seriously. But if you're wanting to chill out, you're going to have to figure out ways to get very grounded because there's a lot of fire and air together here. And it could be an excess of air energy that's just way too much information. On a mundane level, this is terrible if there's, you know, like high winds and a fire situation. I don't like this at all for something like that. And then the sun is, uh, of course, you know, next week, I'd say Tuesday, the sun will be in Scorpio. And yeah, and then we're headed towards Halloween, and next thing we know, it's going to be the, oh God, I'm wondering about the costumes now. <laughs> the next thing we know, it's going to be the election. So yeah, so the sesquisquare is still going on from the, the uh, sun to, the, to Saturn. Again, reality check that creates a, a detour or a disruption to some plans. Hopefully the disruption would have to do with any government official who is victimizing their constituents. Time will tell. Yeah, and you can see how, you know, Ceres is working working her way towards Pluto. These when these two come together, that's going to be really powerful for women. Women and and it, the things that we loyally protect, things that we put our loyalty towards put our invest our, our loyalty in I should say so I think that's it I think I I think I'm good I'll just get this uploaded send you big hugs as always <laughs> take good care bye